Hey guys, Ben here and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about The Flash and the DCU. We'll be discussing all things in terms of The Flash casting for the DCU at some point in the near future. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future DC TV or DCU videos later this year. Okay, so we've got an interview from Grant Gustin talking about his time on The Flash and talking about his latest project that he's working on. Obviously he's on Broadway right now, that's what we're talking about. Plus also we've got a question from one of you guys in regards to The Flash in the DCU, who will play that character, and we'll talk about a couple of fan casting ideas that have been floated out there. So for now, let's go ahead and get into this video. So as you all know, The Flash obviously premiered its film last summer, it didn't do well. So I think we're all expecting a little bit of a break until we see The Flash again. Now of course we had Grant Gustin's version of The Flash before, he was such a pivotal part of building the Arrowverse, but also he was pivotal in terms of building up the popularity of the character, like he's become supposedly mainstream when traditionally most normal people out there wouldn't know who The Flash is, but more and more people know who The Flash is because of The Flash TV show. I don't think the film did like so much to actually build on that because it just didn't do very well, didn't perform well, got not very good reviews obviously because of the CGI and because of some of the ways that they went about telling the Flashpoint story. So I don't think we're expecting a Flash in James Gunn's DCU anytime soon and that's probably because they want to get that image out of you know the cinema goers minds where they're like okay Let's do some other characters, let's do Superman, let's do Supergirl, let's do Booster Gold, let's maybe go back to Blue Beetle, include them in Teen Titans, let's introduce a bunch of new characters and basically create our own universe with characters that really haven't been as much told. Of course, we're ignoring Superman here because obviously there's been so many Superman films, TV shows and everything like that but they want to tell some other stories, which I think is very commendable. And so, at some point, they're gonna have to have a DCU Flash, if the DCU is successful, of course. Now, remember way back when, when we were talking about the DCEU, being like, in four years' time, the Cyborg film is coming out. Oh, and Justice League 2 will be coming out about that time, and then you would have Wonder Woman 3, and yeah, that obviously didn't turn out to be you know, like that, because the DCU was a success at some points, obviously like Aquaman is a big example of that, it smashed it at the box office, did really well, but then recently it just hasn't been performing up to the standards of what the DCU established a while ago, and so with the box office numbers dwindling and obviously interest dwindling, this new DC reboot has come out like the perfect time, and so I think in terms of who could be the next Flash, that is the question that comes in from Sidhu on YouTube, who asks, who can be the Flash in the new James Gunn's DCU? Maybe Grant Gustin? Question mark, and he puts like a kind of detective emoji. So what do I have to say to do with that? Obviously I've talked about Grant before, he's open to coming back, but I don't think he's gonna be the DCU Flash. It's a very slim opportunity, maybe about a 1% chance. I'm not gonna say it's less than 1% because I think if James offered him like a really good screenplay, a really good role to play as The Flash again, I think Grant would actually accept it if he was free, of course. But I think more likely than not, like we're seeing across the whole DCU, apart from a few different pockets, obviously specifically the characters that James Gunn has created because he wants to continue with those same actors because he doesn't want to like kind of betray them I guess. So I'm gonna say The Flash is gonna be recast and they're gonna go for someone new. Now I don't know if we're gonna go Barry Allen, I don't know if we're gonna go Wally West, but if we go Barry Allen there is the potential that they do it around like the same age as Grant and Ezra and so they keep it in that kind of 20s category and so with that, you can obviously theorize about, you know, a number of actors like Jacob and Lordy, like all these big actors currently right now that are kind of in that age range. Obviously, David Corenswet is the latest Superman. He is a great casting for Superman. So who do you guys think would be a great casting for The Flash? Because off the top of my head, I don't really have like a perfect Flash casting. And so I'm not going to pretend to you guys like, oh, this person is going to be great. This person is going to be great because 
I think they have a lot to live up to, and that's why I personally, if I was James Gunn, I would be doing Wally West instead of Barry Allen straight away. I would introduce Wally West in Teen Titans, and then potentially build on his appearance in Teen Titans as Kid Flash, and maybe do a Flash film with Kid Flash with The Flash, whether that's Barry Allen or Jay Garrick. Maybe include The Flash family, and so it's like a whole different type of Flash film to the one that we got, obviously that was the Flashpoint adaptation that they were doing. So Wally West, now what version of Wally West could it be? Could it be a Ginger Wally West, like traditionally in the comics, or more like the recent Keenan Lonsdale style Wally West, like could it be a mixed race Wally West? I think, you know, there is a high possibility it could be either, I think it's probably 50-50 right now, but obviously Keenan Lonsdale popularized Wally West in a big way, whereas, you know, Wally West in Young Justice was very popular, and so that Ginger Wally West is also super, super, you know, always in theories and super out there because people just want to see that version because everyone loved him in Young Justice, they love him in the comics, and now we've got Keenan as well. You've got the option in terms of the way you want to go with Wally West, which is obviously a great thing to have, and so I don't know who I would cast as Wally, but yeah, I would keep it in a kind of younger age category so they can appear in Teen Titans because that film is coming out and I think that is the prime opportunity to reboot The Flash and to introduce a new Flash to cinema audiences and I think you have to do Kid Flash in that film, like he is a pivotal part of the Titans at many times in the comics and I think he is a big character and that would actually draw a lot of fans if there was a Kid Flash in the Teen Titans film coming to the DCU. So yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on The Flash. Let's talk about this fan art because it's really cool. It's actually for an actor called Lucas Till. Now, I think this is a really great piece of fan art. This was actually kind of like the inspiration behind making this video. You know, I wanted to do a little bit of theorizing, of course. I like doing that from time to time, but you guys will know Lucas Till from MacGyver. He did that show from 2016 to 2021. He's been in a bunch of different shows and a bunch of different films. Now, he's not, like, the most popular character, and he's, like, 33, but he looks relatively young. So I think a lot of people would like that, but he is a little bit more unknown. Yes, there is probably big MacGyver fans out there, maybe some of you guys watching this, so you'll be like, no, he is, like, super popular, but... You know, to the outside world, I don't think Grant Gustin is super popular, but he is to us Arrowverse and us Flash fans. So if you're a fan of that specific show, obviously you'll be like, oh, Lucas is a great actor. Maybe he would be a great fit for The Flash or even a Ginger Wally West. I know way back in the day when the Arrowverse was still going on, everyone was like, KJ Abba has to be Ginger Wally West. Like, he looks exactly like him. He's a good actor. He's on the CW. So we've got to have him show up at some point. Obviously, that never happened. And so there are some fan castings that just make total sense. I think this makes a bit of sense. He looks the part. And if James Gunn wants to differentiate his Flash from the other Flashes in the Arrowverse and the DCU, I think going maybe a blonde Barry Allen is not a bad idea. Going a comic book accurate Barry Allen would actually work. So I think someone like Lucas Till, who obviously in this fan art has blonde hair, it just kind of, you know, stands out to me. So let me know who would be your fan cast. Let me know down in the comments below. But for now, let's move on to talk about this article from People. Now, this article is titled, Grant Gustin says his Broadway debut, Water for Elephants, is more physically demanding than The Flash. So let's talk about this, because obviously Grant played The Flash in the Arrowverse for a long time, but now Grant Gustin's first stint on the Broadway stage is much harder than being a superhero, according to him. So let's break down what Grant actually had to say. He said, this Broadway show is for sure more physically demanding. I mean, with The Flash and any project like that, first of all, I had a stunt double. The same stunt double that whole time. Cody was my stunt double all the way through The Flash and he was amazing. The hardest things I would do on the show is running from time to time and throwing myself on the ground and falling in fights and whatnot. He said about obviously playing The Flash. 
And so having that stunt double was a big, big help because you didn't have to do all the action sequences being like flung off buildings and everything like that. So he tells people that it takes much more out of him than his previous on-screen roles since he's doing it for an audience eight times a week. Specific parts of your body are taking the same beating over and over again. So that's the hardest part on your body. So if you guys don't know much about Grant's current show, he has to do a lot of acrobatic things. He has to be moving, climbing and dancing through several sets in the show. And there are also acrobatic performances that he has to do on wires throughout the show. So that's stuff that normally his stunt double would be doing. So it makes sense that this is actually harder. I just thought it would be interesting to point out how actually tough this is for him. Obviously, the Flash was tough because obviously he did like nine, ten years and that was like very demanding shooting all the time and obviously there's the action scenes but you don't think about it when you're watching it. You're like, okay, Grant is actually doing all this but no, he's got a stunt double like all the rest of the main cast members on those shows because it just makes things easier if you've got professionals doing it. But that pretty much does it for this video guys, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos, but for now you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video, and I'll catch you guys later, goodbye. I see red.